are various ways to look at MS, and I suppose one could uh, subdivide MS into multiple subcategories, but, but mostly the old uh, discussions were about either clinically isolated syndrome, uh, the first event, uh, which uh, in many cases we now just call early MS. Uh, there is uh, relapsing MS. Uh, you'll hear the term relapsing or remitting MS, uh, but I think I prefer the term relapsing MS because uh, even if the symptoms remit, the disease uh, continues to go on with regards to inflammation and progression. Um, uh, too many people with MS uh, go on to secondary progression. That means a secondary progression from uh, the onset of the relapsing MS. And then there are people with primary progressive MS, and those people never really have early relapses, but rather a slow, gradual deterioration often in walking, not exclusively, uh, over time. Um, a more current uh, uh, consideration is to try to divide relapsing MS into one uh, heading uh, and uh, progressive MS, whether it's secondary or primary, uh, into another heading with a few subdivisions in each. Uh, it's probably useful to know both of those definitions, the standard definition and the evolving definition. Multiple sclerosis, when it presents, can either present uh, in a relapsing remitting form, referred to as relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. This is characterized by bouts of neurological dysfunction that come and either go away completely or go away mostly with some residual. Many of those individuals who started with a relapsing remitting course will end up with what's been called a secondary progressive course where the relapses become less and less prominent or evident, and what appears to emerge is a slow, ongoing worsening of neurological function, which has been referred to as progression. There's a 10 to 15% of people with MS who start their course without obvious relapses, but rather a slowly progressive course, and they've been referred to as having a primary progressive MS course, meaning progressive from the onset. The importance of distinguishing between relapsing and progressive forms is increasing as we're now having treatments that are being approved for relapsing remitting versus progressive MS, both primary progressive MS and in the near future probably secondary progressive MS. With the presence of therapies that have been approved for those different types, trying to establish the correct diagnosis is important. A major issue that is important for clinicians to understand is that a great deal of the injury in multiple sclerosis occurs under the surface, below the level of clinical detection. This is true for relapses that biologically can occur and cause bouts of injury without the patient or the clinician being aware of them. We know that if we follow people over time with frequent MRIs, one sees damaging lesions come and go over time with the patient perhaps not experiencing a single relapse. Similarly, the non-relapsing progressive biology also almost certainly is occurring under the surface, starting much earlier than we appreciate clinically and continuing under the surface below our level of detection. So what we see clinically, whether it's relapses or progressive aspects of MS, should be thought of as a tip of the iceberg, and we need to do a better job at capturing the injury process under the surface so that we can make better decisions with patients in terms of either escalating their treatment or changing treatments over time. Prognosis in multiple sclerosis continues to be an area that we are not doing as well as we would like to. Uh, of course, for a patient living with MS, the single most important question perhaps is, what will happen to me in the future? Uh, we have a range of features that relate to the clinical experience and the MRI features that can help us prognosticate on the average, but we're still falling short in terms of accurate prognostication at the level of individual people living with MS. Those who have a primary progressive course from onset, on the average, may expect to have a worse course of progression of their neurological impairment, although there are those with primary progressive MS who progress very, very slowly and have rather limited disability over time. Similarly, relapsing remitting MS is a spectrum ranging from rather mild, infrequent attacks that are not debilitating to very frequent and potentially very debilitating attacks. I think that neurologists have probably been too focused on being neurologists over time. And it's become clear that in the field of MS, but not only in MS, that a person's general health uh, impacts uh, their neurological health. It's very true in MS as well. So whether the, uh, the problems are smoking or whether the problems are obesity, um, whether the problems are hypertension or diabetes, each of those uh, negatives uh, either uh, singularly or in combination, 
uh, worsens the prognosis, increases the likelihood of progression, uh, increases the likelihood that the course of MS will be less. Uh, that means for neurologists treating MS, we're really responsible for taking a closer look, not just at the neurologic side of MS, but the medical comorbidities.